building. That's not the foundation upon which the church was built. The book of Romans was written to church people. And he says, but thank God that you were the servants of sin. But you have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Now, I'm not going to go into it today, but the only record we have of the doctrine being delivered to the Romans is in Acts chapter number 2 and verse number 10, if I'm not mistaken. But God be thanked that you were the servants of sin. But ye have obeyed. But ye have obeyed. I thought you just was saved when you believed. But ye have obeyed from the heart. That form of doctrine which was delivered you. Look here at verse number 18. Being then made free from sin. When were you made free from sin? When you obeyed the doctrine that was delivered you. Being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. This is 100% undeniable scriptural proof that we do not have to serve sin. We do not have to hide under a cloak of hopelessness that says everybody's a sinner and everybody sins every day. But the Bible says, Brother David, when I obey the doctrine, this is Pentecost Sunday. And I'm not going to have time to get into it all together. But do you know why that they were in the upper room on the day of Pentecost? Huh? You want to know why they were in the upper room on the day of Pentecost? You want to know why they were in the upper room on the day of Pentecost? It's because the Lord said, Go and tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. They were in the upper room, Brother David, because they were being obedient to the word of the Lord. Oh, listen to me now. He said, go and tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. That word endued means clothed or covered. You stay in Jerusalem until something comes out of the heavens and covers you and consumes you with its power. The only foothold that sin can have in my life is the one I give it. With obedience to the doctrine of salvation, I'm made free from sin. Which leads us to the final portion of our opening text. The whole reason I wanted to preach this message would have absolutely nothing to do with what I've preached to you so far. If you have issues with it, take it up with the Lord. But be prepared to have your feelings hurt when he tells you I was right on target. Let me say this before I go any further. We are not going to have revival by becoming more like the world. We're not going to grow a church by becoming more like the world. The people that you see here that don't look like your idea of Pentecost, they're people that are just getting started on their journey. Amen? And I can't wait to see where he takes them. I can't wait to see where he takes them. But you that were born shortly after Noah came off the ark, saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost from your mother's womb, you better not start looking more like the world and acting more like the world and using these babies as an excuse to not be able to, to dress holy and godly and modestly and raise your children the same way. <laughs> Knock him out, John. It won't be long. Some have not the knowledge of God. And I speak this to your shame. Can you take me back to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse number 34? Some have not the knowledge of God. That's the scripture. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse number 34. And I speak this to your shame. 
This is in reference to the seemingly overwhelming influence of those that are corrupting them from the truth of the, rev rev the resurrection. This is in reference to, there's some that don't know the truth of salvation. And I speak this to your shame. Everybody knows, oh God, everybody knows that folks can now go to whatever bathroom they want and and. That now folks, uh, they're telling people, you better let them go to the bathroom where they want to in school. And if you don't, we're going to take your money away from you. Oh, it came out yesterday. I, I didn't make that up. It, it came out yesterday. And you know what? Everybody's hearing it. Everybody's hearing that there may be like in a, in a, in a nation of, of 250, 300 million people, there may be like less than half of 1% that can't make up their mind what they want to be. But everybody's talking about it and, and everybody knows it and, and everybody knows it, that they're letting men get married to men and women get married to women and what is this world coming to? But some have not the knowledge of God. And I speak this to your shame. Hmm. I'm going to submit to you that on the face of planet earth, there are more one God, apostolic tongue talking, holy rollers. Than there are people that are in the minorities that are getting all the voices talked about them. Do you realize that there are countries on the face of the earth right now that the largest church in that country is Holy Ghost filled Pentecostals? That in, the, that in the entire world, the fastest growing church is those that believe in speaking in tongues as the evidence of the Holy Ghost. Look it up, ask about it, check and see. That there are more people fit, being filled with the Holy Ghost every day throughout this world than there were on the day of Pentecost. Let me tell you something. If we would get as worried about how many people is going to hell as the chance that maybe somebody's going to try to go to the bathroom with one of our kids. What's more important? There are people dying right now, today, going to hell that don't know about the power of the Holy Ghost. But they know that in Timbuktu, East Outer Mongolia, that some old boy followed a little girl in the bathroom. And that's bad. That's not good. That's not something that should be happening. And you teach them to scream really loud. And, and you teach them to pick up the plunger and punch him right in the face with it. But I'm telling you, saints of God, the church cannot be distracted by what's going on out there in the world. Because if we're not careful, we'll become a part of what's out in the world. Amen. Say, no, you won't. No, you won't. That's what the Bible says. Evil communications corrupt good manners. What you hear today that is going to appall you and you're going to sit around the dinner table and talk about, it's going to be worse tomorrow. Oh, it is. Every day it's getting worse. It's getting worse. It's spiraling out of control. It's getting worse until the things that made us appalled five years ago, Brother David, are a part of our life today. So, say, we got to refocus. I thought you was going to get my mind off of the fact that I can't pay my light bill this month. I thought you was going to get my mind off the fact that we had Raymond noodles for supper last night. I thought you was going to get my mind off the fact that, that me and the wife was fussing last night. I thought you was going to get my mind off the fact that the kids won't mind half the time. Man, ain't nothing I can do about making your kids mind. That's your job. Hello? 
But I can as a preacher of the living God, as a, as a preacher of the gospel, as a watchman standing on the wall tell you that we got to stop being worried about things that don't even impact most of our lives uh, and realize that we've got a world to win and a gospel to share and it is the gospel that frees from sin. I tell I've lost some of you this morning. You want to stay mad about things that are going on in the world and you want to stay glued to your TV set and your Yahoo News morning, noon, evening and, and, and midnight and in the middle of the night when you can't sleep. And I'm telling you the solution for this world is still Acts 238 salvation. It is still Jesus Christ and Him crucified. That's what we got to get our focus back on is the power of the Holy Ghost. Either greater is He that is in me than He that's in the world or it's not. Yes, if I preach you under the table of conviction, I'll do it. If you spend every morning, noon, and evening talking about what's going on out in the world, and you've got the Holy Ghost, you have become a part of what's out in the world. You say, well, I don't do that stuff. It ain't about doing it. It's about where your mind is. Because the book says, be sober and be vigilant. Because your adversary, this junk going on with the bathrooms, that is not the problem. The problem is sin. And the only freedom, man, I, I could preach some stuff. You come back tonight, I might do it. It might make people do cartwheels down the middle aisle like they tell us tell it we do. Okay? But I'm telling you, what I'm preaching today is going to save us. And it's going to keep us saved. We cannot become so infatuated and enamored with what's going on around us in the world that we forget the answer for it. Yeah, write your congressman if you want to. I think you should. Write people, you know, when, when, when our workers get mistreated and all that, we should stand up for them. But at the end of the day, it ain't your pocketbook that's going to take you to heaven. I'm not mad. I'm not angry. I'm trying to get us refocused. Look here, Romans 12 and 21. I don't know if I even gave it to him, but you know what it says? Be not overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good. You know, as I was writing this down today, and, I, and I, I'm coming to a close here sometime in the next 20 minutes or so, and uh, I, I was writing this down today, and all I could think about uh, is when Elijah and Gehazi went out that day to fight that battle, and, and Gehazi is going, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, uh, this is what's happening. You read it in the Bible, he said, oh, look at all around us, uh, they're, they're everywhere, they're everywhere, they're fighting us, they're going to kill us, uh, we're outnumbered, it's just me and you, and we're outnumbered, and the Lord, and Elijah said... Lord, would you open this old... Boy, I'm preaching this morning, Brother Rice. Would you open this old boy's eyes and let him see that they that be with us are more than they that be with them. And when he opened his eyes up, he looked in on every hill all around him was chariots of fire and soldiers of fire. I'm going to tell you that there ain't nothing that this world can conjure up that the Lord doesn't have the answer for and he doesn't have the antidote for. But what we've got to make sure we don't do is become a part of the world. We've got to keep the Holy Ghost burning in us. We got to realize that we're standing up on the rock. We got to get our focus back. There is no greater, greater manifestation of good than the gospel of Jesus Christ of his death, burial, and resurrection. Not only were they being negative influenced, but they were neglecting to do any influence in themselves. With the most powerful weapon ever entrusted to mankind. Look here. Acts chapter number 1 and verse number 8. But you shall receive power. Look here. Look here. Come on now. But you shall receive power. After the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Not after you believe. Not after you say the sinner's prayer. Not after you shake the preacher's hand. Not after you come to service three times in a row and get your name on the book for goodness sakes. But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. 
And why do you have, oh Lord Jesus, got to get our focus back. Everybody say, I got to get my focus back. That was pitiful. I got to get my focus back. I got to get my focus back. got to get my focus back. I wish he'd shut up saying, I got to get my focus back. My focus is on the Grecian Steakhouse, sir. That's where I thought about this morning. Excuse me for saying it, but that's what I kind of had on my mind this morning. Or the Chinese place. Or the Denny's place. Or my bed this afternoon. Exactly what I thought. I done thought about all that stuff this morning. When you pry yourself out of bed. Six something in the morning. Brother David, right that minute I could have slept till tomorrow. And I done thought about my bed this afternoon. I done thought about my grub this afternoon. I, I done thought about, the, you know, get, go make sure Garrison gets all of his stuff done this afternoon that he's got to do. I done thought about all that stuff today. But you know that ball game he's going to play tomorrow, when it's over with, guess what? It's over. It's over. Here a while back, Dana, you'll find this funny. Here a while back, we went to we went to Cape and played ball. We played terrible. Garrison didn't do so hot, and you can tell. You don't even have to watch the ball game. You can tell if he won or lost by how far his lips poked out. Well, you're done. <laughs> he drug his bag over there and he threw it in the back of the truck and. I said, you hungry? No, sir. Want to go eat? No, sir. Okay. That's cool. And we pulled out of, out of the parking lot. And all of a sudden, ain't Taco Bell right up there. I thought you wasn't hungry. thought you didn't want nothing to eat. I didn't. But in like half a mile, the ball game was over. And, uh, but we put so much emphasis on so many things that don't amount to a hill of beans. It's over. You know, it's over. It was, that was hilarious to me. I knew it was coming. I knew it was coming, but for like 47.3 seconds, the world needed to stop because we didn't score as many runs as the other fellers. We've got to get our focus back. You don't, you get power when the Holy Ghost comes on you. We as the church that's built on the rock cannot fall prey to the moral relativism that is swept into many churches and religious movements. I'm never going to set a stool up here and start wearing holy blue jeans and tennis shoes and preaching. I'm not going to do it. I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm not saying you're going to hell. But I'm saying that, that if the president or the, or the prime minister or, or somebody showed up, I'm going to dress up. And I'm here for Jesus. It's about focus. It's about focus. We cannot render the message of redemption powerless. In the face of a foe that seems to grow stronger, more ungodly each day. Because greater is he that is in me than he that's in the world. It's that same spirit brought Christ forth from the grave. If it's in me, the Bible says it will also quicken my mortal body. I heard the other day, I think Brother Burt shared it. I have two of his books, of uh, Leonard Ravenhill's books in my office. And I'd be happy to share them with you. One's Revival Praying, and, and I forgot the name of the other one. But he said John the Baptist uh, came out of the wilderness, uh, clothed in camel's hair, uh, and eating locusts and wild honey. Uh, he had nothing to offer. He had no prestige. Uh, he had no uh, 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 anything beautiful about him. Uh, he was poor as Job's turkey. And he would for every evening eat supper by crunching up a big old bug with big wings that eats up people's crops 
But yet when he began to preach a message of repentance, people flocked to hear him. I've got to let you know something. Jesus said, if I the Son of Man be lifted up, and he was on the cross, I will draw all men unto me. You hear me well. We don't have to back down. We don't have to crawl away from anybody. This message of the gospel, it works for anybody. And we don't have to be pretty. We don't have to be prime of everything. We don't have to be the one that everybody wants to look like. We just got to preach the gospel. But Brother David, we got to get our focus. We, we, we. We decide in our mind, well, they don't want it, and they don't want it, and they're not interested, and they don't want it. And the truth of the matter is, uh, is you can come out of the wilderness uh, clothed in camel's hair, eating locusts and wild honey. And if the Holy Ghost is behind you, you will begin to draw people to you. How is it that the worse the world gets, the more our church grows? The journey to redemption begins at the same place for everybody. We are all born in sin and shaping in iniquity, and we was all born needing to be saved. Not from the individual sin, and we all like to debate, well, I don't know if that's wrong, and I don't know if that's wrong, and I don't know if that's wrong, and I wish we would just rain on that. I ain't got time to be worried about what's right and what's wrong all the time. I ain't got to worry about how pretty I am or how ugly I am or, or how I fit in or how everybody looks at me like I'm crazy. But I got to realize, uh, Brother David, uh, my focus has got to be on have I helped somebody come to Jesus today? Have I shared the gospel with somebody today? Uh, have I told somebody what they got to do to be saved today? <laughs> and it's not the individual sin that's the problem, but it's an inherent sin who has one message, uh, which is to separate us from God. God and bring death to us but Jesus made a way Jesus made a way it's called Calvary it's a bridge of mercy built upon the, uh, the love that the world has never seen like of it's a way for the West the way of Jesus it is death that's repentance a turning away from a life of sin and a turning toward a life of hope repentance is not just saying I'm sorry and keep on going the way you've been going but repentance is a turning away from the world and a turning toward Jesus Christ. You say, well, that means I got to quit everything, got to stop everything, got to change everything. No, but it means you got to want to. It means you got to want to. And the closer you get to Him, the more junk's going to fall off. Because there's certain things that have invaded your life and they're spiritual and you start getting closer to the Lord, they're going to run. In water baptism in Jesus' name. It's right there in that baptistry. Or if you so desire, I can find a ditch, or I can find a hole, I can find a swimming pool, or I'll take you to the river. But it's water baptism in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, it's a washing away of the sins that represents our old man. Honey, you come to the music. It's a burial of the man who was once ruled by the flesh, who is now declaring, I want to be ruled by the Spirit. And it is the infilling of the Holy Ghost. That is the rebirth of that man that died. You see, I died at an altar of repentance and I was buried in a watery grave in the name of Jesus Christ. But I came up out of the water prepared to be reborn by the infilling of the Holy Ghost. From the ashes of a carnal man's ideology that leads to a certain death. To the abundant life bought and paid for by the blood of Jesus Christ. The sign that you've received the gift of the Holy Ghost is the same one it was in Acts chapter 2, Acts chapter number 8, Acts chapter number 10, and Acts chapter number 19. Is that you will speak in a language that you've never spoken before. Unknown to you, but a manifestation of the surrender of the entire body. Brother David taught us Wednesday night, the tongue is an unruly member full of deadly poison and no man can tame it. But when I surrender it to the Lord, and I begin to speak in a language that I don't know, and it sounds like gibberish, and it sounds like baby talking, and it sounds like something that's just really foreign to me, then I know I have surrendered everything and I'm filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And the most important thing about that is that I'm no longer subject to sin. Oh, I can keep doing it. I can do it. But I don't have to. I have the power to just say no to the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. The kids are all going to come out right now. And for some of us, that's going to be an easy way out. 
an easy way out. Stand with me if you would. I don't want to sing this song this morning. But I want to read it to you. As I was preparing this morning it came to my mind, Brother David, and so I knew all the words to it, but I've started saving them and writing them down for one of these days I get my nerve back up to sing again. It says, Through my disappointments, 